Hello everyone, welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, as you can see behind us here, we are shooting this video in the evening because I do have a law practice to run during the day and then something really big happened in Washington DC late this afternoon that we're going to have to get our video out on. I know a lot of other people out here on the YouTube reverse are talking about this as well. And that issue of course is House Resolution 1808, the assault weapon ban of 2022 has in fact passed out of the House of Representatives. Now, some of you may be watching this video late. Some of you be waking up in the morning realizing that, oh my God, I have stepped into Armageddon. Is it that bad? Well, first of all, everyone take a deep breath and then let's spend a few minutes today talking about the assault weapon ban passes out of the House. Now what? Okay, so the issue we're talking about tonight is House Resolution 1808, the assault weapon ban of 2022. Now, we have done already a video on it, this video right here, and we talked about what an absolutely terrible, and I do mean terrible, piece of legislation it is. And we'll talk about what it's going to do in just a moment. You can also check out the other video for further details. We also predicted in that video that hey over there on the funny farm the house of representatives they are just crazy enough that they might actually pass this thing well lo and behold this evening uh, out of the house of representatives house resolution 1808 was in fact passed by the house of reps by a vote of 217 to 213. now that is a much narrower margin than the democrats have in the house so how did this all break down well almost all votes went along party line but let's point out those who crossed over first of all there were five democrats Five Democrats who voted against this legislation. Henry Cuellar, Democrat out of Texas. Jared Golden, Democrat out of Maine. Uh, Vincente Gonzalez, a Democrat out of Texas. Kurt Schrader, a Democrat out of Oregon. Nice work, Mr. Schrader. Uh, Representative Ron Kine uh, from Wisconsin are all of the Democrats who actually voted no. But if you're doing the math in your head, you're like, well, wait a second. That doesn't add up yet. That's right. Because there were two Republicans, there were two Republican representatives who voted for this legislation. So, Representative Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania and Representative Chris Jacobs of New York actually voted yes on this legislation. Now, if this were to become law, what does House Resolution 1808 claim to do? Well, it's called the Assault Weapon Ban of 2022. And so what you probably think right away is, oh, this is an AR ban, this is an AK ban. And yes, it is that, but it is much, much, much more, okay? Because the way this legislation would work is it would redefine many, many terms in the United States Code and it would create a new classification of firearm called semi-automatic assault weapon. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? Now, any firearm that fell into the classification of a semi-automatic assault weapon would, of course, then be banned. Now, your ARs in all platforms, your AKs in all platforms, just about any semi-automatic rifle would fall under that. But so would all AR pistols, AK pistols, okay? But in addition to that, Many of your semi-automatic shotguns are going to be defined as semi-automatic weapons and, and I'm not making this up, any handgun which can accept more than 15 rounds is now would now be considered a semi-automatic assault weapon. So you're talking about the banning of 80 to 90 percent of the most commonly used firearms in the United States used for personal protection. So the bill now heads over to the Senate where there is a 50-50 split, but in order to pass out of the Senate, that needs this bill needs 60 votes. So you're going to need 10 Republicans to break and vote with the Democrats, and you would need every single Democrat to hold the line. What is the mathematical probability of that occurring? I believe it is close to zero. Now, I know some of you are rolling your eyes. Some of you are saying, hey, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. And I agree with all that. And yes, I know that some of you had expressed concern about some of the perceived rhinos in the Senate and that they could back this legislation. But it, let us also remember that there are a couple Democratic senators 
who have not particularly been supportive of most of this progressive agenda. I'm not even certain if this bill will make it to the Senate for a floor vote. If it does and it passes, will President Biden sign it? You better believe it with a huge Rose Garden ceremony. Now, one of the things that I as a lawyer gets to do is I get to live in the world of the hypothetical. So hypothetically, if this were, bill were to be enacted into legislation and become law, what is the likelihood that it could stand a constitutional challenge? Well, if we are talking about the current makeup of this Supreme Court and the rule of law, which is most clearly announced now in New York Pistol and Rifle Association v. Bruin, along with the very well-recognized rule as announced by Justice Scalia, that the Second Amendment protects the types of weapons which are in common use at the current time, a piece of legislation which is intentionally designed to ban 85 to 90 percent of the most commonly used firearms in the United States is never going to have a chance, a snowball chance in hell, actually, of passing a constitutional challenge. But remember that caveat is so long as this court maintains its current makeup. So the bottom line, the point I want you all to take here is I want you all to take a deep breath. Yes, we did kind of expect that this bill may get passed out of the funny farm. It has. Many other crazy pieces of legislation have. Now we're getting a little bit more into where the grown-ups. So now this bill goes to the grown-up table, okay? And the nice thing is, is that things don't have a tendency to be as extreme in the Senate. And the mathematical formula necessary for the Democrats to push this legislation through the upper house is virtually mathematically impossible. Listen. You may have more questions about this legislation or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights. And remember, you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, everyone remember, part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.